Today we are working on send an email when a specific product is shipped. That is the task that we will be building. So for this, we're talking about fulfillments because that is the thing that represents a shipment. And for fulfillments, we need to grab a fulfillment event. So we'll be down in the Shopify section under fulfillments, create or update. These will be the two things. Um, I don't remember off the top of my head if a fulfillment existing is the same as it being shipped, um, but let's begin here and see what happens. Um, now over here on the right, we see immediately when a fulfillment is created, some stuff happens. And if we click this icon right here, we see a preview of the data that comes in. Um, this is a representative example. Um, it's obviously not a future event. Um, in this case, it's actually an event that Mechanic has seen previously for the specific Mechanic account. So. We have shipment status, which is null for this thing. We have a set of line items. Um, this will be the thing from which we get our product match. Because we're again, we're only sending an email if a specific product has been shipped. Um, require shipping is probably going to be true in our case. Yeah, so really the only question that I've got on the outset is, is a new fulfillment the same as the thing being shipped? So let's take a look at Shopify's fulfillment documentation. Status, is that what I'm looking for? Shipment status. So we're looking for shipped. Do I want to be as specific as this? Hmm. So these are all really specific statuses that are based on the carrier service updating Shopify with the current status of the shipment. Um, it might be better to do something general like this. Maybe a successful fulfillment. This feels closer to right. I wonder if this status success, yeah, okay. So this is a manual fulfillment and doesn't have any shipping information on it and our status is still success. My guess is that this is what I'm looking for. When we receive a fulfillment and it's success, I'm sorry, it's status is success, then we'll send out and an email. So for this, we need to track the fulfillment through, hmm, through maybe two steps. We're talking about the fulfillment creation and the fulfillment and the fulfillment update. Um, which means that if we're subscribing to updates, we may see more than one update over time. And it's totally possible that we'll see more than one update event come through with a status set to success, which means that we wanna make sure that we only ever, or that we have a way to remember um, if an email has been sent for a specific fulfillment um, so that we don't accidentally end up sending multiple emails for that same fulfillment. Also updated, fulfillments update, there we go, okay, cool. So yeah, so here's our mechanism. Um, we're gonna be watching for fulfillment. We're gonna be filtering for just the fulfillments that contain the product that the merchant is interested in with this task. And then we're gonna make sure that we only send out an email once. So we'll be setting a meta field properly to ensure that we don't accidentally send more than one. Okay, cool. Let's begin at the beginning. So with a fulfillment event, we get a fulfillment object. And the fulfillment object resembles what we saw right here, which means it has a line items property, which means that we have a reference probably to the product. We have a variant here. Um, I'm expecting to see product ID in here somewhere. Do, 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 do I not actually? Product exists. Oh, okay, product exists is false. That's probably why I don't see a thing here. Oh, that's interesting. Um, okay, cool, cool. Well, here's the title. So maybe this will be the thing that we're looking for. We'll take a look at the line item title. Mm, but that's going to be, oh, here's my product ID, I found it. Yeah, the title will be informed by variant options as well. So what we're gonna do is take a look at line item dot product dot title to see what we're actually looking at. So, um, <laughs> assign fulfillment product, Um, fulfillment, dot line, items. Let's give ourselves a little bit more room here. We're mapping for the product property and then we're mapping for the title.
title property. So what we'll have here as a result is an array of all of the product titles that come from each fulfillment's line item or one from each line item. Um, so our next step might be as simple as saying, if this array contains um, required product title, it could be as easy as that. Yeah, that, that should literally be it. Um, naturally, this is a little bit constricting because we're talking about a product title and not a SKU or product ID. And so I actually might go with product ID instead, um, pointing people on our documentation to our article about, oops, uh, wow, resource ID. Also, no, uh, apparently I've searched for that before. <laughs> All right. How do I find an ID for product collection order or something else? So if I'm writing a task that includes a reference to a resource ID, um, I like to include a link to this article in the task documentation so that folks know exactly where to go. So I'll say this task requires a product ID, learn where to find this. And I'm excited to get a new MacBook because this keyboard is ridiculous. All right, cool. So the documentation section, I'll see, I'll see something like this. Okay, cool. We have a product ID. It'll look like that. Fantastic. So hmm, uh, we need to actually start our sending our email, make sure that we've got some preview actions, and then the meta field step that I said before. So we've got our title. Um, let's do the easy part first and generate our email. So I'll throw in an email action using that little helper right there. We'll put this in here. We'll say we're gonna send it to the fulfillment.order email. And this is all muscle memory at this point. I've written a lot of emails. Email, body, oops, body. And this is gonna be a multi-line field. It's gonna be required. We are going to strip it for white space on either side. We're going to convert um, all the new lines to line breaks, and then we'll format it as JSON for the benefit of our action, and we'll be good to go. Um, we still don't see this here, well, partly because we now have a missing required option. Um, now you have my email address. Uh, your product has been shipped. Okay, cool. Um, we still don't see this over here because, uh, again, Mechanic is running through the script for the purposes of our preview using representative data, which means that the line items that are populated in this fulfillment object almost certainly don't contain this particular product ID. And now that I'm saying product ID, I realize that we actually don't need to look at the title. We need to look at the product ID. That actually saves, of it, saves us an API call here. Because if we were to do it this route, we would need to look at the product record for every single line item, which is a one API call for each round. Side note, if we were to do this in GraphQL, we could do it in one API call, but this liquid API maps to the REST API, which means that ultimately, if we do this kind of lookup, it's one additional API call for every single line item in the fulfillment. But not if we do that. Okay, so we've got the product ID, and we're now looking at product IDs instead of product titles. Cool. All right, we still don't see our preview action over here, um, and that's for the reasons that I just explained. So now we're gonna talk about a technique that I have uh, discovered, I guess, along the way, um, of using the special event.preview flag to populate preview-only stub data at the very top of the task. Um, to explain by example, We're going to create a brand new fulfillment object overriding whatever mechanic was pre-filling for us um, with a blank hash. And we're going to fill it with an array of line items, the first of which will be a hash containing, wow, product ID, there we go, containing the product ID that the merchant has configured. And you might have noticed a blip back here, that's because that was the sound of our email being filled in. Rad. Um, we can continue filling in our test data, or our preview data, our preview stub data, um, by attaching an order to this fulfillment. 
Let's do that down here. Um, order is a hash. The order's email is well, customer at example.com. And we should see that yep, populated right here. So here's, here's what we gain by using this, uh, this method. Um, we gain a way to prove that all of this works right during the task development mode or our phase of development, I guess. By controlling the data that's used to generate this preview over here, we can say conclusively that the logic here and the construction of our action does exactly what we intend. For example, if I were to change this product ID, well, if I were just to remove, like, get that attribute out of there, um, we wouldn't see this anymore because our set of product IDs no longer includes the thing that's um, named in the test configuration. Likewise, if I were to change its value to something different, we lose those things too. Um, if we lose our order's email address, we're still sending out an email, but it's to nobody, and that's going to result in an email delivery error. So a thing that we can do is say, um, what should we do here? Assign, fulfillment. Uh, this is just how I like to do things. Assign, but there are a million ways to structure this logic. Okay, there we go. Um, if the fulfillment's order email is blank, then it does not qualify, and we only send the email if it qualifies. So what happens if we put our email back? Ta-da! Rad, okay, we're looking like we're in really good shape already. Um, okay, so we now need to pay attention to the fulfillment's status. Uh, we decided, I decided, that we're only going to send an email if the status is equal to success. So... Um, and I'm going to reorganize this because I feel better about putting things that could grow arbitrarily, like an array at the end, and things that are least complex at the very top, like this. So our status is a success. Um, actually here. Um, you can probably already see how we could re-nest this in a bunch of different ways. Like I, I could say, unless, and end unless, and that would also work. Um, it really comes down to what you find to be the most readable um, with some considerations for what's gonna be most performant as far as API requests go. Um, I like this, I think. So actually, let's, let's pay attention to this. I'm not sure if the order object comes along with each fulfillment. I kind of think it doesn't. Let's fix our liquid syntax before proceeding. Just a placeholder for now. Pretty sure our order, yeah, we just get an order ID, not the entire order object, which makes sense because the entire order object could be huge. Um, that's an API request right there to look up their associated order. So I'm actually only going to yeah, I'm, I'm, we're gonna start by checking the things that we don't have to make another API call for. So we'll say here, um, mm, okay, we don't have to check for status, we don't have to check for product IDs. So here, unless, well here, if it's not blank, There we go. So now with this chain of logic, we're checking something simple, the simplest thing possible about the fulfillment. Then we check some more complex data that doesn't require an API lookup. And then we check some simple data, but data that requires an API lookup. That way we ensure that for the vast majority of fulfillments, we'll never even get here. So we save on, on API usage overall. This isn't something that you need to worry about that much as you're writing mechanic tasks. Um, really slowdowns only occur if you're running massive volume and even then we have options. Um, if you're ever unsure what to do with this, hit that chat button in the corner and let's chat. 
Okay, cool. So we've got fulfillment qualifies. We send our email. This appears to be working splendidly. If I change this email to, actually, if I change the status to anything but success, that goes away. If I nix the email, that goes away. If our product ID goes away, our, we lose our preview. Perfect. So our logic is sound. We just proved it without even having to actually run the task, which is awesome. Um, let's save this and just because we've made good progress so far. So saving this, I realized just blew through this. Um, mechanic scans the actions that you generate and the liquid code that you write in order to determine what information you actually need from the Shopify store. And it uses that to ask for permissions. So here we have a request for viewing orders, including order fulfillments. We're gonna update the app to grant that permission. Cool. Uh, okay, all right, the, the next thing that we need to think about is how do we handle successive updates to a successful fulfillment? And I mentioned earlier that we're probably going to use meta fields for this. There, there are two places to store data in Shopify. And if you've heard me talk about this before, I'll be brief. And if you haven't talk, heard, about me, heard, heard me talk about this before, you can read more of the docs, but uh, we have two places. There's the meta field, which is a, a, a piece of data that doesn't expire, more on that in a second, um, that is, that exists over in Shopify. And we can attach that to the store. We can attach that to orders. Um, I don't think we can attach that to fulfillments, but we'll check on that in a second. The other place we can store data is in Mechanic itself using the cache. The cache is less good for something like this because the values do auto expire in 60 days. It's a cache. It's not an actual permanent store. We're not going to use the cache because if we send out an email for fulfillment and then 61 days later it's updated for who knows what reason, the customer will get another email saying, hey, your product has been shipped and we don't want to do that. So we're not going to use the cache. I only mentioned it because I want you to know that it is here and it's useful for something that you know you're going to use in less than 60 days. So let's talk about meta fields instead. Um, I don't think, I'm pretty sure fulfillments don't get meta fields, which means that we'll need to store this on the order object instead. Yeah, order, yep, it's order or shop are the only same places to put this or the customer maybe, but no, that doesn't make any sense. So we'll use the order. Um, yeah, cool. So if the fulfillment qualifies, we're going to be, yeah, so let's start from, let's start from chronologically the flow that's going to occur. So the first time we see fulfillment with the status of success, we need to write a new meta field to the order object saying, hey, we sent this email. If we see another successful update in the future, don't send another email. So we're gonna use a Shopify action for that. We are going to update the order having the fulfillment's order ID. And instead of setting its tags, we are going to set its meta fields. And meta fields require a couple of properties. So for example, namespace, we'll call that mechanic. Um, a key, we'll call that, what will we call that? Um, <clears throat> hmm. So usually for this sort of thing, there are a couple ways to do this. Um, I could assemble a string that looks like um, fulfillment ID plus product ID plus email success. And that would actually be a really good candidate. Um, this would only fall down if we had two tasks that were configured to look for the exact same product ID, which could happen actually. So I would rather Mm, I would rather augment this with something that keeps it unique per task. So for that, I'm going to use the tasks ID. So let's do this. And we'll have to reorganize this slightly. <clears throat> Actually, we can just reorganize this now. There we go. Okay, so let's start building our meta field key. Assign meta field key equals, let's start with the fulfillment ID. Let's append the product ID. And let's append a um, 
that, which doesn't exist yet. We'll create it here. So the task object is special. It refers to the current task, naturally. And the current task has an ID. It looks like this. Um, this is a very long string, and I don't want to use that entire string. So what we're going to do is um, hash it with a hmm. No, SHA-256? Uh, oh, you know what? We didn't document this here because it's a filter that we borrowed from Shopify. So Shopify has a couple of filters that allow you to create hashes from your uh, string. And we're going to use this one to convert the tasks ID instead of this into a very long string that we're going to truncate to five characters. Um, that's obviously not as secure as using the entire thing, um, but I'm confident enough in the uniqueness of these five characters coupled with the fulfillment ID plus the product ID to be content with it. Um, and I think slice is what I'm looking for. Uh, zero and then a length, yep. So we're looking for zero and then a length of five, sure. We'll take our hash piece, we'll throw it on the end of the meta field key. Um, let's use one more dash though. Cool, so we have the ID, fulfillment ID, the product ID, and then the hash piece. And that will be our uh, meta field key. Okay, then we need to think about the value type. We're gonna say that that's just an integer. Um, value types can be a couple. Oh, JSON string. Um, I knew this existed, but it just occurs to me that I can store like an actual Boolean if I call this a JSON string. And I'm, that's awesome. I was going to store an integer of just one, um, but I can do this instead. And when you're writing JSON strings, you got to double escape this. Um, that's because the second JSON filter is for formatting our value in a way that works with this action definition right here. And the first JSON filter is because the JSON string needs to be formatted as a JSON string. So the output for this will be something like, um, mm, that's basically what we're gonna see rendered out from this. Actually, no, that's what we're gonna see rendered from this because this is a string representation of the JSON representation of a Boolean. Ah, wonderful, what a world. Okay, cool, so this is our meta field. And if we've done our job right, we should see, yeah, right next to our email, we also see this thing right here. And here's our meta field key. We note that we are missing a fulfillment ID because up in our stub object, we did not include an ID attribute. Now we have, and that's here our fulfillment ID coupled with our product ID, which is filled up in here. And that's, I'm typing letter keys to prove that if we define this as a number field, mechanic requires this to be a number. So anyway, I just wanna show you that it does change. So we've got our fulfillment ID, our product ID, a hash form of the tasks ID, and a JSON string of true, and we're good to go. So the only thing left then um, besides a real functional test of this thing that doesn't rely just on stub data because we might have missed something, um, is to read this meta field beforehand and include it in our decision about whether or not to make, it, uh, uh, I'm sorry, include it in our decision about whether or not we should be doing any work whatsoever. So let's move this declaration up to the very top. Um, this meta field key is stable, um, to use a term that you may around for before. Um, which means that this meta field key is not going to be changing unexpectedly. Um, the fulfillment ID, well, the meta field key will always be the same for any given fulfillment coupled with the same product ID for this same task. It's not gonna change up from under us, which means that we can assign it up here and use it for both writing down here and reading, which was what we're about to do next. Um, right here.
and it really should just be that easy. The order object includes the ability to traverse into meta fields, and if you've ever have questions about that sort of thing, you can just search for the kind of object you're looking for and find in our documentation that it does have a... <laughs> All right, normally you would see a presence of a meta fields mentioned here. Um, mental note to myself to add that into our docs. But I happen to know, I apologize for this, I, I happen to know that you can access order meta fields this way as well as meta fields on anything else that supports meta fields in Shopify. Um, and the lookup works the same way as it does uh, if you've ever worked with meta fields in a store template. Um, you look at the namespace, you look at the value, and then the thing that comes back from that entire lookup um, is the deserialized, it's no longer JSON, it's the real um, value that you intended to store there. In our case, that means it's going to be a simple Boolean, true, or null, because that meta field just doesn't exist. So unless that thing exists and is truthy, um, we say the fulfillment qualifies, and then we send our email. Now, this continues to work because uh, this uh, lookup right here is just going to be null because we don't even have meta fields defined for our order. Um, I do want to be able to test that that works using stub data, so let's fill this in. Order meta fields, that's going to be a hash. And mechanic is also going to be a hash. And the meta field key, I, I need to use this meta field key variable, so I don't love doing this, but I guess it kind of makes sense to put constants at the very top anyway, uh, before you do anything mm, logical or, or conditional, as in the case of this thing right here. So now we have our meta field, I, our key. All right, so now if we fill in true here, we see that our email preview has gone away. And if I change that true to a false, our email, yeah, should return, fantastic. Cool, so again, this method lets you prove all of your logic um, without even leaving the task writer. I haven't had to leave this screen in order to demonstrate to my own satisfaction that our logic is sound, which is awesome. Okay, cool. Um, so now the only thing that remains is to add additional access because now um, we're not only looking at fulfillments, we're looking at orders. And this piece of information right here doesn't change, but if I hit view details, before it just said order fulfillments, now it says order details as well, because we're now looking at both of these things. So we'll hit update app. Um, I should clarify, uh, we're looking at order details because we are looking up um, the order's email and we are looking up the order's meta fields. All right, cool, so we've saved. Um, now what I want to do is actually test this to prove that it works. So let's find a product. Um, actually, let's find an order, because I'm pretty sure this store has some order, no, the store has zero orders, cool. So let's look at the products that we've got. We have a bunch of demo stuff from another video. We'll be using the short sleeve t-shirt. Fill in this product ID right here. Head over to orders and let's set that up. Um, we are going to add a customer making sure that they have an email address. Awesome. Mark it as paid to create the actual order. Yes, please. Okay, here's our order. So now we are going to mark this thing as fulfilled. And yeah, that's all we need to do. Fulfill items, right, yeah. And right down here, we should see almost immediately an event relating to this fulfillment. Oh, got some blipping. Cool. Okay, one of these actions succeeded and one of them did not. Let's find out what's going on there. But fields.key is too long. Okay, cool. So apparently the combination of the fulfillment ID and the product ID, um, was too long. So probably what we're going to do then is involve, 
hmm, I could either hash all of these things together, like combine all of these things, the input for that uh, uh, SHA256 filter, um, or I could do something else. Uh, also, unexpected token at true. What? This is absolutely valid JSON. What are you talking about, Shopify? Uh, that bums me out. I was really hoping that was going to work. This for sure is a valid JSON string. Um, oh, but it wants a string. Hmm. JSON string. Maybe I do need to double escape it. Or triple escape it in this case. I'm using it at this point. Okay, cool. So we know for sure our Metafield's key needs to be shortened. So let's address that question first. Um, right now, we have a, okay, for the sake of testing, I'm going to do this. Action, echo, meta field, key, I see the typo. All right, so right now, we've got a meta field key of size 33. We almost made it, but not quite. Um, I could shorten this down to just, like, two characters then, and that would be okay, um, as long as the size of this integer never changes. Um, which it will at some point. Our, our product IDs are almost halfway there to the next, uh, not order of magnitude, the next digit. So we're not gonna take that approach. Um, what we are going to do is, yeah, we're gonna hash this entire thing. So we're going to take the fulfillment ID and the product, or the configured product number and the task ID, and we're going to hash that whole thing. And I removed the dashes because the dashes were there just to make this thing like human readable. Um, if we're hashing everything, we don't need to worry about that because the whole value is uh, not significant to a human. I don't love this approach. Uh, oh, I don't love this approach. And so I suppose I could just add a description. I've never, this has literally never occurred to me. Um, yeah, okay, cool. Well. So now we have proved that we have a meta field that is 30 characters long. We no longer need this echo to tell us this because it is literally written into the code right here, 30 characters long. Um, and what we are going to do is down here, add a description so that anybody who um, is coming by knows what's going on. Um, mechanic sent an email for this fulfillment in task, uh... okay, cool. We can look at our Sends email fulfillment for product da, 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 in task. Da, da, da. Um, another note to self, uh, task IDs don't populate in preview mode. We'll fix that. Um, okay, so we've got this. Um, <laughs> uh, huh, do I really triple escape this? I really want, I really want to see if this works. Um, I don't love it, but I really want to see if it works. No, because this is a JSON string. If you deserialize this JSON string, you just get the string true instead of the Boolean value true, which I don't want. So I'm gonna go back to that. Don't love it, it's fine. Save. All right. Now, previously we did um, send an email before and, but we failed to set our meta field, which means that if I edit this tracking in some way by perhaps adding the carrier number or a tracking number, um, that means that we should see another update event come through because we're also subscribed, if you recall, to uh, fulfillment updates. Um, I think, yeah, so by default, mechanic hides events that haven't done anything at all or yet. If I uncheck this, we get to see this um, the entire way through instead of only when we get to the action phase. Okay, cool. So we've now set two meta fields. I'm sorry, we've uh, performed two actions. We have sent an email, uh, which is down here, and we have updated an order with a meta field. 
mechanic sends an email for the fulfillment for product da, 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 in task, and there's our task ID, so we know that works. Here's our Metafield key. Awesome, it worked. Okay, um, if we've done our job correctly, I'm gonna preemptively uncheck this. If we've done our job correctly, a subsequent update to this fulfillment should do nothing because we have already written that meta field. So let's run an update. And let's wait for, yep. Here's our update coming in and it did nothing. That's perfect. That's almost perfect because what I actually want here is a log statement explaining why we didn't do anything. It's always, always better instead of nothing to see instead a message that is addressed to you informing you of what actually happened. So if And if I'm being consistent about this, I'm also going to extend this logic here. So we're going to change this to an unless. Um, and I need to include uh, the configure product. Okay, um, and then success. That's the other thing to do here. Um, now we have ensured that we will be documenting our way through this, which is good because, well, from my perspective, from a customer support perspective, um, it's good to have that sort of thing because it makes it way easier for me to figure out what happened if somebody writes in. Um, and if somebody writes in, well, they might even have to write in if they see this kind of thing in place. The task already sends an email if this is fulfillment of product. Awesome. Um, I am actually satisfied. I don't think I require additional testing because we've proved that um, it works if everything is perfect um, and that it doesn't um, if anything isn't. And we've proved that second part using all this stuff right here. Um, we can prove it one more time really quick. If our status is not success, we don't do anything. Um, if our email is missing, we don't do anything. If our meta field is set, we don't do anything. This will look like that instead. Actually, that will look like that. But, um, and then if our product ID um, is something other than the configured value, we don't do anything. All right, awesome, we're good to go. From the merchant's perspective, they're only going to see this configuration and none of the stuff that we just wrote, which is ideal. All they're need, going to need to configure is the product ID and they can figure out where to find that in the documentation. The fill in the product, uh, email subject, and this. The only thing remaining is that I want to give merchants a um, something to start with. So fulfillment.order.name. And remember, this requires an API call to actually retrieve, uh, which means that we're not going to see anything right here. So what I'll do here is say, yeah, something like that. Okay, we're good to go. If you have any questions, hit me up. Otherwise, have a phenomenal day. Cheers.